Welcome to EPG Partsala. In today's module, we are going to discuss about energy efficiency and energy audit. The demand on the energy resources is continuously increasing over the years. There is a huge gap between the energy supply and the demand chain. The energy efficiency along with the renewable and other non-conventional energy sources is required to ensure a sustainable energy consumption in this world. The government of India aimed at meeting this energy demand by cutting down the wastage of the energy and saving the carbon emission. Indian government has provided various schemes, policies and strategies for efficient energy consumption. And the most important one is the Energy Conservation Act of 2001. In this module, we are going to discuss about what is energy efficiency, the features of Energy Conservation Act 2001, India's current initiatives and schemes for the enhanced energy efficiency, energy audit and its various types. Let's start with the Energy Conservation Act. This act was enacted in 2001 and further amended in 2010 with the aim of increasing the energy efficiency and energy conservation. Bureau of Energy Efficiency under the Ministry of Power was set up as the statutory body on 1st March 2002 to develop policies to increase energy conservation and efficient energy use of the country. The act gives a regulatory mandate for the standards, labeling of equipment and devices, energy conservation building codes for commercial buildings, power consumption norms for energy intensive industries. This act also directs states to designate agencies for the implementation of the act and promotion of energy efficiency in the states. Let's see what is the difference between the energy conservation and energy efficiency. These are the two terms involved in utilization of energy in efficient ways and measures for sustainable energy development. The conservation aimed at using less energy while the efficiency denotes the use of the wise use of energy with minimum wastage. So you can say the energy conservation is a behavioral change in reducing the energy consumption. For example, switching off the light while leaving a room, unplugging the computer when not in use, etc. are examples of energy conservation. Energy efficiency is the use of improved technology that need low energy to perform than the existing technology. It is defined as any process, technique or equipment that helps to achieve reduction in energy consumption while performing an operation, while achieving the same or better level of output. Example, the use of LEDs or OLEDs that improve the efficiency than that of an incandescent bulb. Let's see what are the India's current initiatives for enhanced energy efficiency. National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency, NMEEE. This was set up by India for prioritizing energy efficiency measures. NMEEE is one of the eight missions under National Action Plan on Climate Change with the objective that energy efficiency measures can provide domestic developmental priorities and climate co-benefits. The 11th plan aimed at reducing the energy intensity per unit of the greenhouse gas by the 20 percentage during the period. This mission aims to boost the programs under the EC Act through the four major initiatives. One is PATH scheme that is perform, achieve and trade. This is a market based mechanism to enhance efficiency in nine energy intensive large industries and sectors. This allows voluntary trading of energy savings by the energy saving certificates. The second one is market transformation on energy efficiency that envisages on ongoing shift to energy efficient appliances and machinery in designated sectors through the innovative measures. The third one is energy efficiency financing platform and the fourth one is FEED that is framework for energy efficient economic development that leverage fissile instruments that can help finance 
and the other one is the demand side management programs. Next is the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. This bureau was created under the Ministry of Power for setting the recommendations of the Energy Conservation Act 2001. This bureau is also the legal entity for executing the initiatives under national mission and engages in public-private partnership in implementing various energy efficiency program under that. The Energy Efficiency Policy endorsements through the Electricity Act 2003 and the national mission reinforces the Bureau of Energy Efficiency's role as the central agency for developing and establishing systems and procedures necessary for achieving India's energy efficiency goal. The BEE program aims to make macro level conservation by promoting energy efficiency in individual sectors. BEE initiatives now empower those areas that have received multilateral, bilateral and private sector support for the implementing energy saving measures. State nodal agencies are authorized to initiate and drive energy conservation measures. State energy regulatory commissions, distributing companies and utilities are interested with the implementing regulatory conservation measures and promoting various energy efficiency programs. Let's see the schemes to promote energy conservation and energy efficiency. The first one is the standards and labeling. The Bureau of Energy Efficiency initiated standards and labeling program for the equipment and appliances in 2006 to give the consumer an informed choice regarding the energy saving and thereby cost saving potential of the important equipments and appliances. The scheme involved the labeling of effective lights, frost free refrigerators, distribution transformers, induction motors, electric geysers, fans, color TVs, pump sets, LPG stoves, washing machine, laptops, ballast, floor standing ACs, office automation products, diesel generating sets and diesel pump sets etc. The other appliances are under voluntary labeling phase. The energy efficiency labeling programs under this bureau are aimed at reducing power consumption of the devices without compromising on the services. Energy labels are instructive labels affixed to manufactured goods to show the product's energy performance. These represents relative rankings of the energy efficiency. The energy parameters show quantitatively how much energy is consumed by the product or the energy efficiency rating of that product and other related requirements. In this labeling system, the energy efficiency label, its comparative, it has given 1 to 5 star rating with an indicator that displays what star rating a particular product has earned. One star has given for the least efficient, while the five star for the most efficient ones. The energy efficiency increase with the increase in the star rating. For example, refrigerator that is frost free refrigerator that rate five star and no star refrigerator. If you compare this, both are 250 liter capacities and we can see that the 5 star refrigerator has an annual saving of about rupees 2130 because of its efficiency. Similarly, 5 star air conditioner 1.5 ton split type ACs versus 1 star AC. The 5 star AC saves around rupees 3500. This means a saving for individual consumer of about 700 units of electricity with the most efficient refrigerator and 750 units with the most effective air conditioners. Next is ECBC that is Energy Conservation Building Code. Government of India developed Energy Conservation Building Code for new commercial buildings on May 27, 2007. This code establishes minimum energy standards for new con commercial buildings having a connected load of 100 kilowatt or contract demand of 120 kilowatt ampere or above. Currently, states like Rajasthan, Orissa, Duty of Puducherry, Uttarakhand, Punjab, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana notified and adopted this code for their states. Bureau of Energy Efficiency developed a voluntary star rating program for the buildings which, were, which are based on the actual performance of a building regarding energy usage in the building over its area displayed in kilowatt hour per square meter per year. Currently, the voluntary star labeling program 
is adopted for four categories of building, like day use office building, BPOs, shopping malls, hospitals, and has been expanded and put in public domain. The another scheme is the demand side management scheme. It includes agriculture DSM, municipal DSM, capacity building of DISCOMs, energy efficiency in small and medium enterprises sector. Let's see what is this agriculture demand side management. This program was started in the 11th plan by Bureau to save energy in agriculture sector. The objective of this DSM is achieved by creating market based framework for the implementation of pilot projects and creation of awareness among the end users and other stakeholders for the adoption of energy efficient pump sets. During the 12th plan, the Bureau intends to continue the scheme with an objective build up the process of acceleration of sustainable energy efficiency in the plan by the following interventions. The first one is regulatory mechanism to mandate the adoption of BEE star labeled pump sets for new connections, facilitate implementation of DPRs and established monitoring and verification protocol. Third one is technical assistance and capacity development of all the stakeholders. What is this municipal DSM? Bureau initiated municipal demand side management during 11th plan in the municipal sector. The primary aim of this project was to enhance the overall energy efficiency of urban local bodies which could lead to considerable savings in the electricity consumption, thereby resulting in cost reduction savings for these urban local bodies. Municipal demand side management web portal was developed under the program consists of detailed project reports and knowledge material. The next one is the capacity building of distribution companies. The objective of the program is capacity building of distribution companies for carrying out load management program, energy conservation program, development of DSM action plan and implementation of DSM activities in their respective areas. This program would help the distribution companies for decreasing peak electricity demand so that they can delay building additional capacity. The other one was the energy efficiency in small and medium enterprises sector. This is to promote the energy efficient technologies and operational practices in small and medium enterprises sector in India. The Bureau has started the energy efficiency interventions in selected 25 small and medium enterprise clusters during 11th plan. And a study was conducted to assess energy use and technology gap at the unit level, development of cluster specific energy efficiency manuals, preparation of detailed project reports on energy efficient technologies and capacity building and knowledge enrichment of man force involved in this SMEs. During the 12th plan, implementation of 100 technology demonstration projects in five SME sectors are envisaged to facilitate large scale replication. The other one is the strengthening institutional capacity of the states. It is based on the strengthening of state designated agencies, that is SDAs. It is the implementation and enforcement of the provisions of the Energy Conservation Act in the states. These need to be carried out by the SDAs. As on date, the SDAs have been set up in 32 states by the designating one of the prevailing organizations as needed under Section 15D of Energy Conservation Act 2001. These agencies vary from state to state with the Renewable Energy Development Company, 44%, Electrical Inspectorate, 25%, Distribution Companies, 12%, Power Department, 16%, and others contributing 3%. To start the energy conservation ventures at the state level with an emphasis on adding institutional capabilities of the SDAs, Ministry of Power had approved the scheme of granting financial assistance to the state designated agencies for increasing their institutional capacities and capabilities during the 11th plan. The other one is the contribution to the state energy conservation fund. This scheme is a mechanism to overcome the significant barriers to implementation of energy efficiency program. The grant under state energy conservation fund into those state government or union territories who have created their SCCF finalized the rules and regulation to operationalize the same. The scheme was for a contribution to all the state or union territories with a maximum ceiling of 4 crores for any state or union territory provided in two installments of 2 crore each. The second installment of contribution of this SECF was released only after the states have provided a matching contribution to Bureau's first installment. The other initiatives like 
school education program. It is necessary to introduce children about the efficient use of energy sources during their school education to make them more conscious. In this regard, energy efficiency in schools is being promoted through the establishment of energy clubs. The Bureau is executing the students' capacity building plans under Energy Conservation Awareness Scheme for 12th five-year plan and intends to provide the text or material on energy efficiency and conservation for its proposed incorporation in the current science syllabus and science textbooks of the NCRT for this class 6th to 10th. The other one is this human resource management. The potential for the energy efficiency enhancement of the processes and devices through awareness making is big. A reasonable policy for the creation, retention and upgradation of skills of human resources is crucial for the dissemination of energy efficient technologies and practices in various sectors. The component under HRD comprises of the theory come practice oriented training program and providing energy audit instrument support. The other initiatives in this energy conservation and energy efficiency are promotion of energy efficiency LED bulbs. One is the Ujala scheme that aims to promote efficient use of energy at the residential level, enhance the awareness of consumers about the efficacy of using energy efficient appliances and aggregating demand to reduce the high initial cost, thus facilitating higher uptake of LED lights by residential users. And we have seen the government of India launched national mission and another mission of the national electric mobility mission to 2020 in 2013 was also launched by the government of India. But there are barriers to this energy efficiency. So the implementation of various efforts on energy efficiency had attained only a slow pace. The limitation continued to obstruct the achievement of faster market transformation in energy efficiency in India. And these are distortions in the price, including subsidized pricing of the energy, particularly for the agriculture. Low prices provide fewer incentives for people to regulate and reduce consumption. Lack of information was a barrier in the early years. Now the government's effective use of mass media, including the print and electronic media, has somewhat widened the reach of the energy efficiency message. However, these changes have benefited urban and semi-urban regions than the rural population. The rural areas struggle with energy conservation issues in the agrarian sectors because of inefficient practices are partially driven by an unreliable power supply. The non-technical losses like power theft have continued to be a concern. While small conservation projects in homes require little or financial investment, such initiatives in the industrial building and other sectors usually require some investment due to scale and nature of the related activities. There is a range of financial programs available at the central and state levels, while it is premature to comment on their effectiveness. So there is a concern that information on these is not readily accessible to those who can benefit from it. Now coming to the energy audit. The energy audit is the key to a systematic approach for decision making in the area of energy management. It attempts to balance the total energy input with its use and serves to identify all the energy streams in a facility. It quantifies energy usage according to its discrete function. It is a very effective tool in defining and pursuing comprehensive energy management program in industries. The Energy Conservation Act 2001 defined energy audit as the verification, monitoring and analysis of use of energy including submission of technical report containing recommendations for improving energy efficiency with cost benefit analysis and an action plan to reduce energy consumption. Now what are the types of energy audit? The type of energy audit to be conducted depends on the function and type of industry depth to which audit is needed and potential and magnitude of cost reduction design. So there are two main types of energy audit, preliminary audit and detailed audit. Preliminary audit. This energy audit is a relatively quick method to establish energy consumption in the organization. Estimate scope for saving, identify most likely and easiest area for attention, identify immediate improvements, set a reference point, identify areas for more detailed study and users existing or easily obtained data. 
while in detailed energy audit is the most accurate estimate of energy savings and cost is given by this detailed audit. It provides a detailed energy project implementation plan for a facility. As it evaluates all major energy using systems, it considers the interactive effects of all the projects, accounts for the energy use of all the equipments and included detailed energy cost saving calculations and project costs. Energy balance is an important element of this audit and is based on inventory of energy using systems assumptions of current operating conditions and calculations of energy use. This estimated use is further compared to utility bill charges. Thus, detailed audit is carried out in three phases. Phase 1 is the pre-audit phase, phase 2 is the audit phase and phase 3 is the post-audit phase. So, two main types of energy audit, the preliminary audit and the detailed audit. So, to conclude, the Indian energy policy and initiatives have tried to balance sustainable economic growth through powering industrialization, expansion of energy assist for the poor, enhance energy security and reducing carbon emissions. The government has taken energy conservation measures and schemes for improving this energy efficiency. The energy audit plays an important role in an organization, its energy consumption in a sustainable manner. So, in this module we have seen what is energy efficiency, how it differs from the energy conservation term and we have seen the features of energy conservation at 2001 and we have seen India's current initiatives and schemes for this enhanced energy efficiency. We have also seen what is energy audit and what are its types like detailed audit and the preliminary audit. Thank you.